Okay, guys, while we're waiting, I'm going to do just a quick little intro on me. If you guys don't know who I am yet, hi, my name is Kayla, um, and I'm a marketing consultant out here in Colorado Springs. I am a military wife, so Colorado Springs is not home to me. Seattle is home to me. Um, I have taught multiple seminars across um, New York State and Colorado Springs, um, and uh, I'm just now branching off and I'm trying to do a couple of my own. Uh, these ones are going to be completely free. I have a series going for the month of April. So next week, I'm going to be doing another seminar series on Facebook and Instagram specifically. And I will actually have the link out for that for registration um, later today so that you, if you want to come back for that one, that you can. Good morning, Marta. Um, so just shameless plug. But um, I wanted to let you guys know that um, I have been in marketing for about six years, did a lot of freelance work before I went out on my own, and I now own Maple Wild Marketing and Consulting, and I work with small businesses like yourself um, to help you get your marketing back on track in a way that is simplified, in a way that um, makes sense for you and your business. And I think without further ado, Let's kind of get into this seminar today on branding. Um, I wanna to talk to you guys specifically about branding in regards to how you market yourself right now with your brand, um, et cetera. If you have questions throughout, um, feel free to type them in the chat box um, because we are gonna have a time at the end for Q&A. And don't feel like you have to be specific to branding or the seminar. If you have a question that you wanted to ask me, period, I'll stick around at the end um, to answer any of those questions that you guys might have. Um, and let's get into this. So I'm going to, yeah, Sadell, this will be recorded. Um, that was one thing I did want to mention. This will be recorded. It's recording right now. Um, and I will actually be uploading it to YouTube um, at the end of this today so that whoever wants to access it afterwards can go on YouTube and watch it um, afterwards after the presentation is over. So, great question, Sadal. Okay, so let me share my screen with you guys and we are going to get into branding. Okay, so let's talk about marketing your brand no matter what, no matter crisis, no matter, no matter where you are in your business currently. So, Let's first talk about what a brand means. A brand is your message, who you are as a business, and the promise that you make to your customers. A lot of people ask me, okay, so why do I need a brand? What's so important about a brand? One, it establishes an emotional connection with your customers, and two, it differentiates you from your competition. A lot of people think that their logo, their colors, their font, and their slogan are the avenue. Um, it, they think that is their brand when really that's the avenue where you communicate your message and it's just a tool to further promote your brand itself. I love this quote from Natalie Frankel. She's the founder of the Rising Tide Society. If you don't know who they are, it's an amazing organization um, that has a group you can meet like once a month with other entrepreneurs like yourselves. And they have a thing called Tuesdays Together. But anyways, she wrote, a brand is much greater than the sum of its parts. It's bigger than topography, the buzzwords, the color palette, textures, and patterns. A brand is the way that you make people feel about your business. It's how you serve your clients, the reputations and legacy you leave behind. Strong brands stand for something. They build communities and evoke loyalty. They strive to bring people together in the support of greater cause, shared interest, or philosophy. So a brand is, again, who you are, the unique and true message slash story you represent, and the promises you make to your clients and followers. Your brand is not your logo, the colors you use, the font you picked, how great your Instagram feed aesthetic is, or the compliments people give you about the photography on your page. Um, so I actually made up a worksheet for you guys after, if you haven't thought through some of these questions about defining your message, and I want to kind of hone in on this because if you don't define your message and who you are as a brand or as a business um, and kind of your core values and principles, which are your brand, because again, your brand is your message. So that encapsulates your core values, um, what you stand for um, and things of that nature, then it gets really difficult to market yourself properly. So I actually made this a worksheet. Um, you guys will get a link um, to 
all the slides and several worksheets and resources that you guys can take home and use at the end of this. Um, I'll be sending an email out to you guys um, with all that good stuff. So those questions will all be in there. Um, so I'm not going to take the time to read through all of these, um, but it's basically like just asking yourself, how do we want to make people feel? What are three to five characteristics of our company? What do we want to convey? What problems are we solving? It's those type of questions that are really important to hone in on when you're talking about who you are as a brand. And again, finding your voice. So are you honest, personal, scientific, or humble in your tone? What's your purpose to inform, engage, entertain, amplify, or educate? Um, what's your language? Is it full of jargon? Is it simple? Is it fun? What's your personality? Are you friendly and open? Are you passionate, funny? Those things are so important to define about yourself um, as you're talking about your brand. So a lot of times, and this, I got a really good, great question um, in a seminar I did previous to this one about branding, on what is storytelling like? Why do people keep talking about storytelling and why does it matter when you're talking about your brand? Um, so storytelling, I would argue, is one of the most essential parts to, um, to your brand. Um, and it matters because the stories are things that are true because you made them so with your actions, products, and services. It encourages us to respond to customers instead of reacting to the marketplace, which is really easy to do right now. It reinforces those core values that we we're talking about with the language and tone, and it attracts customers who want to support businesses that reflect or represent their values. Um, and that's from Seth, Godin, Seth Godin's book, This is Marketing, You Can't Be Seen Until You Learn to See, which is a great book um, uh, to kind of read through when you're talking about storytelling and your brand. Um, so I would actually argue that storytelling when it comes to branding is by and large a very much a lost art form. Um, we're constantly told in this marketplace to sell, sell, sell. Everything is always sell your product, sell this, sell this. So there's social pressure. You might have financial pressure. You need to make your goal for that quarter. Um, you have personal pressure that you put on yourself, right? Um, and instead of a story that people can get excited about and stand behind, we're more worried about pushing products out the door. But does a sale mean success? Does it keep your audience engaged? Does it keep them coming back for more? So how do you sell something and then have folks constantly come back to you? That's the real question I think we need to ask ourselves as entrepreneurs. Um, so I wanted to kind of bring up this uh, brewery called Schlitz Brewery. Okay. Um, they were a brewery in Milwaukee. And back in the day when they were running their company, um, every brewer in their area claimed that their beer was pure, but nobody actually knew what the heck that meant. So they hired a man named Claude Hopkins, one of the fathers of modern advertising, and the company began running ads to show why their beer earned the title of pure. When he asked them why they didn't use the information about how they sterilize, process their product, they answered that, well, every brewery does the exact same thing, so why should we bother? When they told the story behind the purity of their beer, you know, if you can see on the left there, it's aged for months, um, it doesn't cause biliousness, uh, every bottle is pasteurized after it's sealed, Germless, ask your doctor. They use like kind of like those keywords and phrases and they made the story behind the purity of their beer. And when they did that, they rose from eighth in the nation to number one in a few months because they were the only ones telling an actual story behind their beer instead of just assuming that people knew what they were talking about. So when I'm saying take them behind the scenes, don't make stories up about your products or your services or your brands. Don't and don't assume that people already know your product story. So when you're talking about product marketing and a story, this is kind of what I'm talking about. You, I think we automatically assume as entrepreneurs that people know and understand the story behind what we do and what we make. And I oftentimes don't think that's the case. And we'll kind of get into a little bit more um, storytelling. So I want to talk to you a little bit about having an abundance mindset versus a scarcity mindset. Um, there is a lady by the name of Bernadette Jiwa, and 
she has a book called Story Driven, and she makes it clear if we're just trying to fill a hole in the market, we're in this constant cycle of review mirror behavior. We're no longer um, looking for a commodity in the making, but we're always just like, oh, where's our competition? We have no choice but to be driven by scarcity, focused on maintaining or perhaps slightly increasing the market share. The alternative to that is to find, build, and earn your story, which is the arc of change you seek to produce with your product. So for example, like myself, um, I see this gap in the market in marketing where everyone is constantly saying, oh, you have to do more and be more and have all the things. And my arc of change that I'm seeking to produce is tell people, no, that's not true. Um, yes, you have to constantly be on your game and improving your, your products and services, but there is a way to simplify your marketing by and large by practicing these key habits. Um, believe it or not, you actually exhibit an abundance or scarcity to the people who are following you. Like you can tell just from what people are posting about, what they're saying and how they're acting if they have one of these two mindsets. Um, so I would just ask you, you know, which one of these do you want to emulate and present as part of your brand? Because again, remember, your brand is your message that you are putting out there to the people who are following you and your clients. So thinking, oh, there will never be enough versus there will always be more. Competing to stay on top versus collaborating to stay on top. Hoards things from others, generous, won't share knowledge, shares knowledge. It's all of that kind of thinking and mindset. When you're talking about telling your story, this is part, a huge part of your story. Oops. Um, another story I wanted to share with you guys, just to kind of show you what I'm talking about here um, in regards to this, is Mary Curie, of all people. Um, her and her husband, Pierre, discover the existence of the elements radium and polonium in their research. So they isolated radium and they would share the 1903 Nobel Prize in Physics with French scientist Henry, I'm gonna butcher that, um, so I'm not even gonna try, for their groundbreaking investigations of radioactivity, which is still used in cancer treatments worldwide. So they actually did a lot of their research in a shack. Um, and, and I mean, it was like a potato shed, you guys. and they actually could have and, and had the opportunity to patent their discovery, um, but they refused to do so and generously shared their information with their fellow researchers and interested industrial parties. By the 1920s, a single gram of radium reached $100,000. I looked that up, that's $1.1 million in today's market. So the thing that strikes me the most about Mary Curie is she was generous, and, um, and she had the spirit behind which she shared her product. She actually told someone radium is an element that belongs to the people. Radium was not meant to en enrich anyone. Um, and it made me question in me with part of my brand and my message, would I have done the same? And the answer is, well, gosh, I hope so. Um, something really important right now, especially when you're talking about your brand and telling a story, is to be still and listen. Right now, it's so easy to just, and I struggle with this, kind of just jump ahead and try and do more and see more and, and, and try and bridge the gap of what everyone's feeling right now with what's going on with um, the virus especially. Um, and it's so easy to kind of just drown everything out by just being busy and just staying busy and instead of doing what I call social listening, which is constantly asking for feedback um, and, and kind of keeping that ear to the ground so that you're not tone deaf to what's happening around you. A lot of people say, well, how do I know? It's so hard, I don't wanna promote a sale or I don't wanna push my brand right now because I just feel like it's not the right time. And if you're doing a lot of this listening aspect to your business, you're gonna know when the right time is because you're gonna be asking for feedback. Um, you're gonna be giving valuable insight on your products and the services that you offer um, and doing things like paying attention to what people are telling you in your DMs, what they're asking you about, what they're saying. Um, this is part of your brand and telling a good story is being able to, to listen really well to the people who are around you. Um, 
a big thing for me is listening well because it's going to serve you well. So asking people what they want versus what you want to talk about and um, asking them if you're being helpful, actually sharing a yes or no in a poll so that you actually get a feel for what people um, are really resonating with instead of saying yes and OMG yes, you know, you're saying yes versus no because you want a real and authentic response to what you're saying. Um, I've talked about this before, um, especially right now with, with building a brand, is you need to be a purple cow, okay? I know, great mental image. So Seth Godin, again, he has a book, um, which I'll, I shared with you on the resource list that I'm gonna be sending out, and he writes, the world is full of boring stuff, brown cows, which is why so few people pay attention. Remarkable marketing is the art of building things worth noticing right into your product or service. If you're remarkable, if you're remarkable, it's likely that that some people won't like you. Uh, that's the part of the definition of remarkable. No one gets unanimous praise ever. The best the timid can hope for is to be unnoticed. Criticism stands comes to those who stand out. So, and that's from like the outside or the inside out. Like you have to push that out and project that with your brand and the message that you're putting out. And then you have to you have to stand for that and constantly show people. Some of the principles he talks about in his book are learning to draw outside the line. So asking yourself really hard questions about your brand um, or the services that you represent. Um, and I thought they were really great questions to include right now because I think um, these questions he wrote back in 2003 really apply to what we're kind of experiencing right now. Um, and being a remarkable business um, I keep saying remarkable. It's remarkable. I need more coffee. So asking yourself, what would you do to make yourself the cheapest, the most expensive, the biggest, the smallest, the fastest, the slowest, the newest, or the oldest? Could you build a competitor to your own product with costs 30% lower? What could you do to make buying, using, consuming, or disposing easier? Could you make a special edition of your product for communities like um, sports associations um, or things like that? Um, to where you can actually have those as a special edition of your product. Um, and again, the whole idea is learning to think outside the lines that you drew for yourself when you started your business. Uh, and again, this is on the resource list. I'd highly recommend this book, especially for what we're kind of dealing with right now as it, in regards to your brand, marketing your brand, um, and pushing sales in today's market. Um, I did want to just touch on really quick. So in regards to this virus, because it's the ele elephant in the room everywhere, um, I don't like to kind of like linger on it um, because honestly, I think people are kind of sick of hearing about it. But I wanted to touch on the fact that small business owners need to innovate and create. Um, and I wanted to tell you, small businesses have the amazing ability to think on their feet, to adapt and address the shift in real time. Um, to build those unique relationships with businesses, clients, and community, and to think about communicating, collaborating, and creating. And that's that whole idea that Seth Godin is pushing in his book. Um, and I think, by and large, um, that small businesses, sorry, I'm skipping ahead of myself, small businesses have a great opportunity here because we're not some big company, you know, we can actually do that and ask ourselves those hard questions and then adapt in real time to fit the need of the people who are around us with our brand, using our unique brand identity um, and, and products and, and, and things just by asking ourselves some hard questions, um, maybe getting feedback of those around us after we kind of ping pong our ideas off of them and things like that. I would probably argue the second most important thing besides defining your message is figuring out who you're talking to when you're talking about your brand. So if you haven't defined your message, the who to your why is gonna be really hard to, to answer. Your target audience is incredibly important to marketing your brand effectively. So saying, hey, who, where are my ideal audience? Like, are they on Facebook? Are they on Instagram? Are they on YouTube? And then how can I tailor my message to that specific marketing channel, to those specific people? So, I know it's hard and you've probably heard the, the buzzword niche a lot. Um, and I would argue that you just think of it like um, if you're talking to everyone, then you're talking to no one. 
So if you can think of being more specific with your message, and again, if you don't know what that is, this, is, this exercise is going to be very difficult for you. But it's like, I help creative entrepreneurs reinvent their digital marketing strategy so they can avoid burnout and get their time back so they continue to do what they love. The focus is Instagram, Pinterest, blogging. And then I know my people are between 26 and 45, burned out creatives or small business owners in general who need practical marketing tips and information. Um, if you don't know who you're talking to, then you can't tailor the message again and you are just talking to everyone. Look at your insights to see who follows you. If you don't have insights, you need to switch to a business account. Um, I cannot stress that highly enough. If you don't know how to do that, message me afterwards and we'll chat. Um, write down the age group and gender of your potential clients. Identify if you have more than one audience of people that you're talking to, i.e. if you're a photographer, weddings versus graduations or engagement versus elopements, um, things like that. You really need to, to hone in and think, okay, who am I talking to here when I'm writing this specific post? And then know what the interests and behaviors are for each audience separately. For example, um, if you're a photographer here in the Springs, it might be different if you focus in on elopements in the mountains versus local weddings at high end, um, ven you know, high end um, wedding venues, those types of things. So if you need more ideas, ask yourself the following questions. Where are your customers searching for products similar to yours online? Can you identify at least six to 10 pain points that they have in relation to your business? So um, a pain point for someone who might be in that elopement is um, how, how far do, do I have to drive? Um, what kinds of things do I need to pack to hike up to an elopement spot? Um, you know, think, things like that, that's, that's a pain point. Like thinking through what is going to be difficult for them to grasp or understand. What are their fears? Is there something keeping them from taking action? Do you know your customer well enough to find more exactly like them? And then what is a profile of your ideal customer? Industry, company size, revenue, um, all of those types of things. Um, and if you don't have a company size, it could be things like family size. For example, I know Dina, who's watching right now, she's a travel agent. So hers might be, um, is it is it a couple traveling alone to a, you know, an exclusive resort or am I, am I targeting a family that's going to Disneyland for a week? Like those are all those different kinds of aspects. Um, I love this quote from Cynthia Johnson from another great book on branding platform, the art and science of personal branding. It's not about packaging yourself to sell yourself. It's about bringing your, bringing focus to your actions so that the right kind of people can find you and subscribe to your message and vice versa. Because again, if you're not talking to the right folks, your message is going to go out there and then it's going to just be like, uh, wah, wah, because it's not reaching the correct people. When you do figure out who you're talking to, you need to develop that consistent tone that we talked about. Your output needs to have the same flavor no matter what. That means your opinions, language, and tone need to be consistent so you don't confuse your followers. It provides a better customer experience, backs up your words with actions, and allows for easy recognition. It would be like me suddenly switching from marketing to talking about politics. <clears throat> Nobody wants that. Being consistent means a lot of hard work, but it is well worth your effort. I talk a lot and often about scaling back so that you can really be as consistent as possible. I have been posting three times a week for the last year and, and three months, and I get in my stories almost every single day. I respond to every DM, every comment, every time. It may take me a day or two to get back to my DMs, but it's about consistency and it pays off. Especially right now, I will tell you, I've struggled with this. I know you guys have probably struggled with this. How often do you post um, and things like that? Um, I'm just gonna see if, hang on. Planning forward, I will cover that in a second. Um, the next slide is gonna be all about right now. So planning forward, I would just say, you know, keeping your quality high by creating a marketing schedule for yourself. Research your posts in advance, like what are you gonna talk about? Figure out what you can batch or theme. So like if you have a, a weekly theme, like Monday is Monday motivation, Tuesday is Tuesday tips, Wednesday is, is 
Like if you're in fitness, wellness Wednesday, Thursday is Thursday techniques. Like you can theme your posts and then you can batch your content. So you're taking all of your photos, you're writing all of your posts at the same time um, and things like that. And then figuring out what you can reuse and recycle. In fact, I just put a blog post out about reusing and recycling content. Um, and it had to do with blog posts, but I think it's applicable to pretty much everything that you put out there right now. Um, because again, you're, you created this quality content. You need to be able to think of how you can use it multiple times instead of just using it once and then just letting it kind of slide into the back of your closet. Um, if you're doing those things, your quality is going to stay really high. It allows you to make an impact, be consistent instead of chaotic, present a strong presence, build trust with your audience, gives you a sense of direction, removes stress, helps you track your return on investment, and provides insight on, on where and how to spend your dollars when you finally get around to spending money on ads. So how to plan right now, again, <laughs> I had to think through this really hard for myself. Um, and something that I've noticed is, gosh, I don't think I need to be posting as much as I have been. Or, and, it, and again, this kind of plays back into that whole social listening piece. If you have your ear to the ground and you constantly are looking to see kind of what's going on and what, what, what's going on in people's lives, like I would say within the last week or so, people were just really trying to figure out what in the world they're doing at home now that they have kiddos and they're trying to figure out their new work schedule. And so I felt like a lot of my informative posts were just kind of, you know, not doing as well as they normally do because honestly, people are super overwhelmed. And that's what I was hearing. So I backed off of those, tried to back off of those a little bit and just try to keep my posts a little bit lighter and things like that. Um, and right now I usually plan like a month in advance right now. I'm going, going week to week, you guys, because I don't think that, um, I can hear what's going on properly if I'm just trying to just push content out, you know what I'm saying? So I'm trying to back that off. This doesn't mean that you can't still plan your posts a month out. Um, but it just means that you need to be sensitive to the flavor of what's kind of happening around you not go tone deaf and really use posts where and when applicable for this specific time frame because this is this is unprecedented and what's happening right now. Number two is being incredibly informative um, and kind of just sharing and communicating as much as possible to your followers about um, what you're doing during this time, how you're trying to help them, um, educating them on things, um, and just being being a voice for them in this time. That's a voice of normalcy, one, um, and two, just giving them as much information as possible because I feel like we're all in the same boat. We all don't know what's happening. Um, and sometimes it's easy, right, to just get overwhelmed and not show up. But I think being true to your brand, if you were consistent before this, you need to stay consistent. Um, continue to show up, continue to be um that person that they know and they trust and, 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 and just be, be a voice for them in this time, your platform, just like mine, um, can be a platform of inspiration and impact. And really, again, that's part of my brand. Part of my brand is I want to make an impact. I want to make a meaningful change in, in business owners' lives. And I want to educate them on the tools that are out there. And so if I just didn't, decide of one day, I was like, I'm too overwhelmed. Who knows who needed to hear what I had to say that day. Um, and the same thing goes for you on your platforms. You know, we all have unique platforms and unique people that we're speaking to. Um, and we need to make sure that we're there for them, especially during this time. Um, and again, small business has a huge opportunity here. So like it's, especially if you're a maker, um, or you have a product or service, it's not all about Amazon, you guys. Um, the pros of small business is there's no tape, red tape to wade through. You can respond to your customers in a quick fashion and there's complete customization depending on the situation and their needs. Uh, I will throw this out there. I had this in my last seminar kind of just um, as a sidebar here for you guys. I know it doesn't have really have anything to do with branding, but discounted sales are better than no sales at this time. Um, sales discounts that matter have an impact. Um, creative solutions that you implement right now do not have to be permanent solutions with your brand, okay? 
and your sales can be flexible. So I've seen a lot of people implementing payment plans, et cetera. Um, there are opportunities here for you to not only continue to show up, but to show up in a way that makes sense for the people who are following you right now and still provides you with an income. So again, asking yourself some of those hard questions um, behind your message and asking yourself, hey, like, how can I kind of go outside of my limits here, think outside the box, draw outside of the box, and then ask myself, and, and really tell myself, hey, like I do have a purpose in this time. My brand has a message. It's a unique message that I need to share. And then how can I continue to provide excellent service during this time with the sales and the things um, that I produce and put out with my products? Um, I will tell you, just changing, changing tracks here, um, a lot of people say to me, oh, well, the, the most important part about your brand are your visuals. And, um, and I will say that I would actually agree with that. Um, so, but your visuals are not the most important part of your brand. Again, your message, um, your story, and, um, and, and then the, the way that you put that out to the world, those are the most important things. Your visuals are kind of like the icing on the cake. Okay. And I always tell people your brand is like a good stretch. You have to do it from the tips of your fingers all the way for your, to your toes for it to be effective. How you package your brand affects how your brand is perceived. It is literally visual communication with your followers and clients. So colors, shapes, fonts, organization of your website, your emails, um, your product packages, and more. Like all that stuff plays into how you are visually communicating your message and your story. So if you think of it that way, it's just kind of like the backing, it's the backbone behind everything else that you're putting out there. Um, and again, you know, even right down to your Instagram feed, like I try and make all of my feed posts kind of look the same, feel the same, talk the same, walk the same, because I want there to be that consistency behind my branding. Another really key element to building an effective brand, especially right now, is leadership. So brand authority is what that's technically called, and it is key to having an effective brand. Good leadership is critical to creative co collaboration, which in turn helps you hit your goals and produce great work. Brand authority is the trust a brand has earned among customers and the degree to which they see your brand as a subject matter expert. Um, so this depends on a variety of factors, compelling content, an active online presence, and engagement in social media. So how many, how many times you respond to comments, how many times you respond to DMs, um, how, how often you're in your stories, or how often you post on your feed. All of that plays into your brand authority and leadership. Um, and a lot of folks, when they look to work with you, that is one of the first things that they look for is to see what kind of authority that you are presenting with your brand online. A really huge thing I think right now that a lot of people aren't covering is that your brand should serve. Um, if you come from a place of service, your message is never going to fall on deaf ears. If you come from a place of service, your story will go further than you ever thought it possible. If you come from a place of service, you won't even feel like you're selling. Um, Raiden Malinik is from another great book that I put in your resource list. He says, the best brands are those who use their underlying brand narrative to empower their followers. They take on the role of a friend somewhere people feel safe and welcome as much a way of life as a product or service. And I think oftentimes, um, if we are just trying to sell a product or service and not actually think about, okay, is this serving people well? Um, what can I do to further enrich their lives with what I'm putting out? Um, I think we miss a big piece of the pie here with our brand effectiveness. Um, and service, you know, they always say service with a smile. I think that's really true. Um, especially right now, people need to feel like you care more about them then you care about selling your product or your service right now. Um, and I know the, the, the pressure again is there, um, but I think it's so important to, um, to, to have that kind of philosophy and what we're 
and what we're putting out and how we're serving our people. And that again, coming from a place of service, you're building a community of people who are with you for the long haul. Again, this whole thing is talking about how do you market yourself in a way that people want to come back for more. Okay, if you're just trying to sell something and you get caught up in making money and just producing things to make money and you forget about your message and, and what you're trying to put out there and the arc of change you're seeking to produce um, and the community of people that you could have out of this, again, that, that piece of the pie gets even smaller and smaller, guys. Um, so creating loyalty comes out of the consistency with which you show up and provide valuable insight and information. It's proof of how well you treat people who interact with you. Building a loyal community comes through serving them well. People want a relationship with you first and foremost. Put them first. Forget about the sale you need to make. Forget about what you want. It's not about you. Um, it's not about me. And I constantly tell myself that. If you focus on building relationships, you'll never feel slimy and you will never have to worry about a shortage of clients. Neglect it, and I guarantee you, you will feel the strain and pressure it puts on your business. Um, I've seen this happen time and time again. People are like, why can't I make a sale? And I'm like, who are the six people, can you name six people you interact with on a regular basis that you promote, that you serve? And they'll go, um, I mean, I have a couple. And by and large, they can't think of more than two or three names that they actually interact with online and have a community with. Number one key to telling you, you need to work on your community and you need to work on service um, with your brand right there. Um, following through, this is another one of my big pet peeves with people in branding. Um, if you make a promise, you need to keep it. Why? Because again, your brand is about the promises and the message that you make to people. If you have a prospective client, reach out, respond in a timely fashion. If you create a plan, stick to it. If you tell people you're going to do something, follow through, do it, um, and do it in a way that serves them. Because again, like I could have put this seminar out and said, hey, I want to run a seminar. Is anyone interested? And had all these people interact with my polls and do all of these things. And then I could have just dropped it and walked away. But what does that say about my business? What does that say about me as a person? So if you're going to do something, follow through with it, stick with it. Um, again, like I said, it speaks volumes about the brand itself, your brand and who you are. And it trickles down into little things like finishing your business profile on Facebook, responding to reviews on your platforms, leaving comments unanswered, asking people if they want more information on something and then never actually giving it to them. They remember. It's scary how accurate of memories people have when it comes to you asking them something that they really want and need as another business or as another person. They, they do remember. Um, the biggest thing I would say it, you need to fear about building your brand is fear in action. Um, I'm especially seeing this right now. And I think honestly, it's because we're just so overwhelmed that we're paralyzed. Um, and I think that inaction right now is a bigger infection than the virus itself, especially with entrepreneurs right now. Um, I felt it. You felt it. We've all felt it. We've all been there. We've all had that experience where we're just like, I don't even, I don't even know what to put out. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. I'm frustrated. I'm overwhelmed. Um, can I just tell you, your brand requires you to, to move forward, to inspire, to create, and the world needs us now more than ever um, as a brand, as our unique individual brand, our unique messages um, and, and views of the world. Like it needs your creativity, the world needs your drive, your passion, and your message. Don't doubt it. Um, because I think a lot of times what's happening right now is we're, we're just lost in this fog of doubt and, and overwhelm, and then, and then we just get stuck. And I just can't help but think to myself, and, and my husband actually said this to me, he's like, he's like it's, it's not about you, it's about the person who needs to hear what you have to say, even when you don't think you have anything to say. Um, you don't know what other people are going through. Um, so how can you say that they don't need your message? Um, so I think a lot of times 
just fearing that inaction, I think should be motivation in itself to share our message, to share our unique brand, um, to share our promises and our values and our, um, and our core values to the people who follow us because the world needs it more right now than they ever have before, especially from small businesses and entrepreneurs like ourselves. If you are a fearing inaction or yeah, if you're fearing inaction, you're fearing all of these things, I think maybe one of the places you need to start and ask yourself before you even get into defining your message um, and, and those things are define, your, define what success means to you. So there's no easy button. Anyone who tells you differently is selling you a line. Um, if you haven't defined what success means to you, then you're always going to feel like you need more or you're not where you're supposed to be. Success looks like sharing your message well and how well you serve people with that message. That's what it looks like to me anyways. So I would ask you, you know, if you haven't defined what does success mean to me in, in this moment, in this space and time, what does it mean to me? Then I think it's going to be really difficult for you to even go back and talk about your message or talk about your who um, or, your, or your why. Because, because if, if you think success means making 10K in a month, um, I, would, I would question, you know, is that, is that something that's going to serve you long term? Is that something that's going to bring you business success um, in the long run? And, and I would argue that, no, it probably doesn't. Um, especially right now, you need to ask yourself the deeper questions on, on what, does, what does success actually look like and mean to me as, as a person, not as a business. So just to wrap up before we go into kind of Q&A time is, Remember, specialists win over generalists in the long time. So again, defining your niche, defining your message, um, finding your tone, your, your characteristics, all of those things, your purpose. Um, I think it's really important to remember that you need to become a specialist. You need to build that brand authority and trust with folks. And the only way that you do that is by, um, by just kind of building on what you've already built on and becoming even more focused in, in your message and your brand that you're putting out. To grow your brand, treat it like you would any living thing, allow it to live, breathe, make mistakes, and be human. That's a big one right there. And then when making a, a business decision, ask yourself the million dollar question, will it help or hurt my brand? Um, if you don't have a brand yet, I would highly encourage you to sit down and ask yourself, these questions, dig into your insights and do some soul searching um, because the stress behind what you do online will greatly diminish if you know the who, the why, and the what behind what you do as a brand online in today's market. Um, I just wanted to say thank you for coming. For those of you who have questions, um, feel free to put them in. Um, in the chat box right now, and I will just kind of open it up for, for questions. I don't see any throughout the presentation. Um, so if you have some, um, Renee says, thank you. I was having a hard time staying on my normal social posting schedule because I was worried about tone. Um, thank you for the little kick in the butt to get back to it anytime. <laughs> um, and I just wanted to tell you guys, I think, um, I think we all need that little kick in the butt every once in a while, at least I do, especially for when I'm talking about um, my brand and, and what I'm putting out, especially right now, it's just been really difficult. Um, does anyone have any like general marketing questions or any questions about branding at all? Feel free to type them in. Or if you have a, I would say raise your hand and I'll unmute you, but um, Sadal says, thank you for the part about inaction. I've been so there and feeling terrible for not sharing more about this time. Yeah, I feel, I feel you. It's, it's been very difficult um, just to have that, that feeling that you're, I think too, the feeling is you're not doing enough either like there's like two sides of the coin. It's like, do I overshare or do I undershare? Like, what do I do? Um, Crystal says, I do not have questions. Um, people saying the daily planning schedule is helpful. I need to be more consistent on post posting, especially right now. Yeah, I would just encourage you guys, ask yourself, 
Um, ask yourself some of those questions about how can you share, what insights can you share about what's going on right now? How can you help? For example, I just had a photographer um, yesterday who uh, she's kind of more in weddings and family. She doesn't do a lot of birth photography, but she just put it put out on her Instagram stories yesterday, like a little IGTV about how to shoot your own Easter photos at home. So again, it's kind of like thinking outside the box um, of how you can help people in this time. Um, and like Dina said, her biggest struggle is what to share. I don't want to sound aloof, but at the same time, I don't want to stop um, trying to help getting people to travel after this. Totally. And so maybe some of the things you share is, um, you know, how the airlines are trying to cope with this, how often the airports are cleaning. Maybe you shared those, um, I shared with you, Dina, the virtual um, rides at Disneyland. Um, there's all kinds of things like that. Um, and so, I mean, just thinking creatively outside the box of like how, what other people are sharing, how they are educating. And if you're a travel agent, you can kind of use that to just share, you know, kind of, I do every Thursdays I have, um, every Thursdays I have a did you know series on my Instagram stories. And that is to show people what's new, what's coming and to just inform them of other things that people have going on, um, with, with their services that they're providing like Instagram or Pinterest or, um, YouTube and things of that nature. So maybe coming at it from like an informational stance and just letting people know what's going on. Um, Mike said, yeah, like everyone else I've been lost and not sure what I should do business wise. I'm starting to do better now. Yes. Mike has some great planner boxes. I wish you lived closer because I would totally snag some of those. Um, but anyways, I hope this was encouraging to you guys. If you guys don't have any other questions, um, Kristen, thank, uh, thank you. I'm so glad that you hopped on. Um, thanks, Dina. I'm going to, again, send you an email with a link to next week's seminar. And then I will also be sending out all the slides and some things for you guys to pour over on your own. Um, but I just wanted to thank you, as always, for those of you who attended today. Uh, I'm thinking of you all. I'm here for you. If you have um, anything that you guys need help with, just reach out um, and let me know because I'm here for you. Um, and I want to make sure that you guys feel supported in this time in any way that I can. So thank you again for coming today. Um, and I will hopefully see some of you guys next week. Um, and have a great week, you guys.